If I handed you a map of the United States and asked you to find the shortest path from LA to New York, you might tell me to eat shit. Or you might draw a straight line from LA to New York and then tell me to eat shit. But if I ask Google Maps to find the shortest distance from Los Angeles to New York, it analyzes millions of road networks factoring in traffic and road conditions, tolls and speed limits across the entire United States and returns the best route all in a matter of four seconds. But how does Google Maps calculate this so quickly? Well, in 1956, the standard method was to literally check each connection across the entire network again and again, making the path shorter and shorter each time until no shorter path could be found. Even world-class mathematicians thought that this was the best way of finding the shortest path until one morning in Amsterdam, Sigma male Edsger Dijkstra unleashed his raw genius and created Dijkstra's algorithm. What's the shortest way to travel from uh, Rotterdam to Utrecht? Now, it turned out that uh, the algorithm for the shortest path, which I designed uh, in, in about 20 minutes or so, in the morning I was uh, shopping in Amsterdam with my then fancy, tired, we sat down on a cafe terrace to drink a cup of coffee. I was just thinking about what I could do this. And, uh, I then decided to get up and push off the path. One of the reasons that uh, it's a matter that I designed it without touch and paper. One of the advantages of designing it without touch and paper is that you're almost forced to. Uh, First, we'll take a map of the United States, with all of its roads, with varying traffic conditions and speed limits, and we'll use a method in computational thinking known as abstraction. Abstraction is where you strip away all the unnecessary information, leaving just the fundamental concept. So instead of looking at every single road and every single junction across the entire United States, Let's simplify it down to just the major highways and major cities. If we ignore traffic and road conditions for now and just use the time taken in hours to drive down each highway in perfect conditions, we now have what is known as a graph made up of vertices and edges with each edge having a weighting. Dijkstra's algorithm works by focusing on only the shortest path. Everything else is ignored. So let's say we have a man in Los Angeles. He used to be vegan, but he recently discovered that he's a big fan of New York pizza. Um, um, um. So he wants to find the quickest route to New York City and back. Let's have a look at his options. The man's starting here at Los Angeles, so he could go to B, D or E. But the man wants to get there as fast as possible, so he's going to take the shortest path to D. Now that the man is at D, we're going to say that he's visited A, so A I'll cross off. The man is now standing at D, and from D he can get to B in 4 plus 9, which is 13, but we already know how to get to B in 6, so 13 is not important to us. Remember, we need the shortest path, so we're going to ignore that. He can also get to E in 4 plus 5, which is 9, but again, that's longer than 6, so we're going to ignore that. But he can get to F in 4 plus 6, which is 10, and we don't know a path that's shorter than that, so we're going to include that. Now we can say he's visited D, but the next path is not to go to F, because F is 10, and B and E are both 6. So next, he's going to go back up and visit B. You might think this is a little bit counterintuitive, why wouldn't he just go through F, because that's closer, but he doesn't know that yet. All he's trying to do is find the absolute shortest path to get to X. He doesn't necessarily know where X is. Now he's at B, he can see C, and that gets him there in 6 plus 11, which is 17. And he can also see F, and that gets him there in 6 plus 11, which is also 17, but we've already got a path which is 10, so we're not going to include that. Now he's visited B, the next shortest path to visit is E. At E, he can get to F in 6 plus 10, which is 16, but that doesn't matter because we've already got there in 10. And he can also get to G, which is 6 plus 7, which is 13. Now he's visited E, the next shortest path is finally back to F. So he's going to go to F and have a look at what he can visit, and he's just going to repeat doing this again and again and again until he works his way up to X. The man makes it up to S in 45 hours, and finally he can make it to X in 47. All he needs to do now to find the shortest path is just retrace his steps back to A. So he goes X, S, N, M, J, H, 
F D A. Once he's visited S and then visited X, he can be sure that this is the shortest path to get to X. Another useful thing about this graph is that not only has the man found the shortest path to the vertex X, he's also found the shortest path to all the other vertices here. So he can use this same graph to get to anywhere from vertex A. So for example, if he wants to get from LA to Indianapolis, he just needs to follow the nodes from N and he can get there like this. This algorithm was such an elegant solution for what was thought to be a complicated problem that it's now used as the basis for nearly all pathfinding algorithms today. The question is why elegance in the breadth so little is aangeslagen. It is indeed little aangeslagen. A nadeel van elegance is, as you een nadeel wilt noemen trouwens, that um, it vergt hard work and toewijding om het te bereiken and a good opvoeding om op prijs te stellen. While Daddy Dijkstra's algorithm is better than the old way of finding the shortest path, it could still be refined a little further to help when dealing with large networks. Peter Hart, Nils Nilsson and Bertram Raphael of Stanford Research Institute noticed that the algorithm was actually searching through vertices that were going in the opposite direction to the vertex they wanted to find. So they came up with the idea of using an estimate known as a heuristic of the distance left to travel so that the algorithm only searches through vertices which bring it closer to the target vertex. This modified version of Dijkstra's algorithm was published nine years after and it was known as the A-star algorithm. So this time, if we have the same graph as before, I need to estimate the distance that each of these vertices are from X. So I'll use a tape measure and actually measure the distance in centimetres. As long as these heuristic values are relatively accurate, we should get a more efficient algorithm. So this time, we're going to do the same thing as before, but you see these heuristic values here? When we find a path, we're going to add it to this, and that's going to be our estimate of the shortest distance. So starting at A, we can get to B, D, or E. But this time, we're going to add the distances to the heuristic values, and these values is what we're going to use to prioritize which vertex we'll visit next. So according to this, we should visit vertex E. Now he's visited E, the next smallest value is D, which is 52. At D, he can see F, which is a distance of 4 plus 6, or 10, which is lower than 16, so we're going to use this instead, cross off the 16 and replace it with 10, and now the previous node is D. Now the path to B and D doesn't really help us because these are longer, so he's visited D. Now the shortest path is the path to G. He can visit G and see I in plus 10, which is 23. And if he keeps going with this, the man has found the same path to get to X, but he hasn't visited B, C, P, Q, or R. And this is because these nodes are too far away from this path. You can think of this as like having the fat man sniff out how far away he thinks he is from the pizza and using his nose to direct him towards it. This is the same A-star algorithm that Google Maps uses to this very day. Although when it comes to traffic, Google recently bought the navigation company Waze, which collects location data on its users to help guide users away from heavy traffic. That's why Google Maps now has that same feature. That's right. Google Maps tracks your location 24-7 to monitor traffic. So just make sure that when you're not using Google, you have the location permission disabled on your phone. Otherwise, you're being tracked. Click this video now if you want to see more, and 